Podcast greetings to you all, and welcome to today's story. Today we will immerse ourselves in the character of Michael, to deeply feel the emotions and struggles he goes through in his life. Before we begin, take a moment to relax and get into the story by pouring yourself a glass of wine. Let the flavor of that wine set the mood for the deep emotions we're about to share with you. I'm Michael, a 36-year-old programmer with a life that many might envy. I work at a stable job, have a house that feels like home, and a loving wife, Jennifer, who has always been my partner in everything. We share a daughter, Lily, who is the light of our lives. For the longest time, I thought my marriage was perfect, the kind of relationship people strive for, solid, reliable, and full of promise. But I should have known. Things are never as perfect as they seem. There are cracks, small at first, that grow without warning. And those cracks started appearing in my perfect world when Jennifer began coming home late from work more and more often. She'd tell me it was just the pressures of a big project at work, that her boss, Alan, needed extra help with deadlines. I believed her. After all, life gets hectic for everyone, right? <laughs> but then the doubt started creeping in like a slow tide that rises without you noticing. Still, I held on, believing in our love and the life we had built. Little did I know, my world was about to crumble in the most unimaginable way. The first time I noticed something off was when Jennifer started staying late at work more frequently. At first, I didn't think much of it. She'd come home exhausted, telling me how her boss, Alan, had been piling on extra tasks and how deadlines were looming. I nodded, understanding. After all, we both had our fair share of work stress. But then it became a pattern. And not just a once-in-a-while thing. Almost every week, she'd come home later than usual. The late nights didn't bother me at first, not really, but something inside me started to stir, a nagging feeling that I couldn't shake. It wasn't just the time, it was the way she would talk about Alan, her voice a little too enthusiastic, a little too rushed when she'd mention him. I tried to dismiss it, but each time she left for work it felt like the distance between us grew just a little bit wider. I couldn't explain it, but I felt this knot forming in my stomach every time she stepped out the door. It was as if the space she left behind grew heavier. I began to notice the little things, the way she would avoid eye contact when I'd ask about her day, the subtle defensiveness when I asked too many questions. I wasn't angry, just unsettled. Something wasn't right, but I couldn't put my finger on it. Uh, it was that um, quiet unease that lingered like a shadow, uh, and I couldn't tell if it was me overthinking or if there was something more. I never expected to find myself driving to Jennifer's office that day, but something inside me pushed me to do it. I wanted to surprise her, bring her a coffee and see her smile. I figured maybe I was just being paranoid and a little gesture might clear my head. But when I walked into the building, everything felt wrong. Her co-workers seemed off too quiet, too careful. One of them, a guy I'd seen around but never really talked to, gave me an awkward smile before quickly glancing away. My heart started to race. I felt like I had stepped into a scene I wasn't supposed to be in. I asked for Jennifer, and they told me she had just left for a meeting with Alan. The way they said it made me feel like I was intruding on something, something I shouldn't know. I lasted. I sat in my car, gripping the steering wheel as I tried to make sense of it. A few minutes later, I saw Jennifer leaving the building. But it wasn't just her. Alan was with her. They were standing too close, talking in low voices, their eyes meeting in a way that sent a chill down my spine. It was the way they looked at each other like they shared a secret I wasn't supposed to know. My pulse hammered in my ears as I watched them walk away together. The air around me felt thick, suffocating, and the first seed of doubt was planted. I didn't know what to think, but I knew something was off. I had just seen the first clue, and it shook me to my core. 
the seed of doubt that had been planted in my mind began to grow, quietly at first, like a vine creeping through the cracks of my thoughts. It started small, an offhand comment here, a strange look there, but it slowly began to overtake everything, like an invisible shadow stretching across my mind, it darkened everything I once took for granted. I couldn't stop thinking about that moment with Jennifer and Alan. The way their eyes locked, the tension in their voices, it lingered in my head like an unwelcome guest, refusing to leave. My thoughts circled around it endlessly, like a storm cloud gathering weight, ready to break. I tried to dismiss it, to tell myself I was overreacting, but the more I thought about it, the less I could believe that excuse. It wasn't just that one incident. It was the way Jennifer started pulling away, emotionally distant, barely laughing at my jokes, not the same woman I'd shared so much with. She had always been the one to bring warmth into the room, but now everything felt cold. I could feel her slipping through my fingers like water, and it terrified me. The doubts were no longer a passing thought. They had taken root, growing deeper, pushing everything else aside. I couldn't ignore it any more. The vine of suspicion had wrapped itself around my mind and there was no way out. Something was wrong and I couldn't escape the feeling that I was about to lose everything I'd built. I don't know what possessed me that night. Maybe it was the overwhelming weight of all the suspicions I couldn't shake, or maybe it was the desperate need for some kind of truth. I didn't think I would find anything when I picked up Jennifer's phone. It was just one of those moments where I had to know, even if I wasn't ready for what I might uncover. Her phone was resting on the kitchen counter, unlocked just like it always was. I hesitated for a second, staring at the screen. I could almost hear the warning bells in my head, but something drove me forward. I opened her messages, telling myself it was just to check on something trivial, but the moment I saw Alan's name, something twisted inside me. I scrolled, and there they were. Messages, hundreds of them, intimate conversations that shouldn't have existed between them. The words jumped off the screen like sharp knives cutting through everything I thought I knew about, about our life. They talked about their dreams, their plans, things Jennifer had never shared with me. It wasn't just friendly exchanges. It was laughter, flirtation, and admissions of feelings that cut deeper than I could have ever imagined. My chest tightened. My throat closed up. I felt like the ground had been ripped out from under me. I wanted to scream, to throw the phone across the room, but I couldn't. I was frozen unable to process the betrayal staring back at me. Three years. Three years of lies and secrets. My world felt like it was crumbling in an instant and there was no going back. I couldn't confront her, not yet. The pain was too fresh, too raw, and I wasn't ready to face the truth head on. Instead, I decided to prepare. I needed proof. Every scrap, every text every photograph, every tiny piece of evidence that could show the depth of the betrayal. It wasn't just about knowing the truth anymore. It was about securing my future. I was methodical, almost cold in my approach. I began documenting every message, every lie. Her text with Alan? Captured. The emails they exchanged? Logged. Her social media pictures? Those innocent-looking snapshots that were anything but? Stored. It wasn't just for my own peace of mind. It was for the inevitable confrontation, the one I knew was coming, and I wanted everything on my terms. I went further, tracking her movements, checking her emails, even monitoring the finances. I moved our money into my own accounts just in case. I knew I was slipping into a dangerous game, but I couldn't help it. I was drowning in this flood of emotions, and the only way I could stay afloat was to take control. Well, there was a part of me that wanted to rage, to scream at Jennifer, to demand answers, but I held back the anger simmering beneath the surface, kept in check by a cold, calculating focus. I had to gather everything first. The pain could come later. For now, I needed to be prepared. 
The more I uncovered, the deeper the rabbit hole seemed to go. Every new piece of evidence only led to more questions, and the more I dug, the more I began to realize that Jennifer's betrayal wasn't a one-time slip. It was an intricate web of lies and deceit. I started with the emails, those cold, impersonal exchanges that now felt like daggers. The subject lines were always innocent, work, until I opened them. Beneath the surface of each email, I found words that weren't meant for me, words of affection, inside jokes, plans for future trips together. Then there were the texts, countless messages filled with intimate details, things she had never shared with me. The tone was casual, almost like they were just friends, but the undertones were unmistakable. They were more than friends. They were everything I feared, everything I'd never wanted to know. And then the photos, social media photos that Jennifer had shared with Alan, together, laughing, holding hands as if the world didn't exist. The images were haunting, not just because of what they showed, but because they were so carefully hidden from me, from the life we had built together. <laughs> with each discovery, a quiet rage built up inside me, but I pushed it down. This wasn't the time for anger. This was the time for control, for methodically planning my next steps. I needed to gather it all, leave no stone unturned, and once I had everything, I'd be ready. I wouldn't let this betrayal destroy me. But it was hard, so hard, to keep my emotions in check as I pieced together the reality of Jennifer's two-faced life. It was a business trip for Jennifer, or so she had told me, but something inside me couldn't let it go. I decided to follow her that day, my heart pounding with anticipation, not knowing what I was hoping to find. When I arrived at the hotel, I saw them, Jennifer and Alan, walking side by side, their bodies so close it was hard to tell where one ended and the other began. The scene hit me like a punch to the gut. They were laughing, their heads tilted toward each other in that familiar way I once shared with her, a way that felt so foreign now. Jennifer's face was glowing with a happiness I hadn't seen in months. Alan's arm brushed against hers, and I noticed how easily they moved together, as if they'd done this a thousand times before. They didn't even notice me, too wrapped up in their own world, too lost in each other. I stood there, frozen, the weight of what I was seeing crashing down on me like a tidal wave. Anger surged through my veins, hot and relentless. The world around me felt distant, muffled by the roar in my ears. My hands clenched into fists, my nails digging into my palms. How could she do this to me? How could she make me a fool? I wanted to confront them right then and there, to tear them apart with words, but I held myself back. I couldn't let them see me like this. I had to stay calm. For now, I would watch them from the shadows, documenting everything. The image of them together. Jennifer, so carefree, so happy with him, would haunt me forever. When Jennifer came home that night, her eyes were downcast, almost too calm. She had changed into her comfortable clothes, but there was something off about her demeanor, as though she were bracing for something. She sat across from me, avoiding my gaze, and then, in the softest voice she could muster, she said, Michael, I think we both know this marriage isn't working. I just want us to end things amicably, for Lily's sake. I, I don't want to fight. Her words felt rehearsed, like she had practiced them a thousand times. The facade was too perfect, too controlled, but I knew better. Every part of me wanted to lash out, to tell her what I had discovered. Everything. But I held back, letting her speak. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any new updates. And if you find today's story interesting, leave a comment saying, Wonderful! If you think the story could use more excitement, comment, needs more drama. I watched her carefully, the way she tried to seem so reasonable, so understanding. 
It was almost insulting. Did she think I was blind? That I wouldn't see through this? The way she twisted the truth, as if she were offering me a peaceful escape from the mess she had created, made my blood boil. She wasn't the one who had been wronged. I was. But there she was, trying to act as though she was the victim, trying to make this look like some mutual decision between us. Inside, I was torn. Every word she said felt like another stab in the back. But I stayed calm, giving nothing away. I knew the truth, and I wasn't about to let her manipulate me into feeling guilty. I agree, I said quietly, my voice steady. We'll handle this with respect. But don't think for a second that this is something we both want. Her face faltered for a split second, but she quickly masked it with a forced smile. The cracks in her act were becoming more obvious, and I couldn't help but feel a small sense of satisfaction. The night was quiet. Too quiet. As I sat at my desk, the soft glow of the screen reflecting in my eyes. This was the moment I had been dreading. The moment where there was no turning back. I methodically logged into our bank accounts, my fingers steady but my mind racing. I had spent hours the past few days organizing every detail, preparing for the worst-case scenario. I couldn't afford to leave any openings, any chances for Jennifer to manipulate how in the hell shit it was. First, I moved the bulk of our savings into an account under my name, careful to avoid any signs of tampering. I knew she'd check. She always did. But this time, I was ahead of her. Next, I cancelled our joint credit cards, redirecting all recurring payments to accounts I controlled. It wasn't just about the money. It was about control. I had to be ready. If this divorce was coming, it would be on my terms. There was no room for mistakes. Every transaction, every shift in finances had to be calculated. I even backed up all the emails, texts, and documents I had gathered, storing them securely, knowing full well they would be crucial when the time came. This was my insurance, my shield, against the chaos that was about to unfold. As I clicked through the last few transfers, I could feel the weight of the situation settling over me. This was it. This was the end of the life I thought I had, and I was preparing for the storm that would follow. The pain of betrayal lingered, but I shoved it aside. There was no time for weakness now. Michael, she started, her voice soft but hollow, a tone I had heard countless times before in moments of tension, but this time it felt empty. I know things haven't been easy, and I want to apologize. I never meant for things to get this far. The words were rehearsed, as if she had spent hours practicing them in front of the mirror. She looked at me, her eyes wide, but there was no real emotion behind them. Only the appearance of regret, the kind of regret that seemed to come more from being caught than from true remorse. I nodded, keeping my face neutral, forcing myself to stay calm. Inside, my heart was heavy, twisted with anger, but I wouldn't let her see it. Not now. Not yet. For a split second, I saw surprise flicker across her face. She hadn't expected me to be so composed, but she quickly covered it up, adjusting her posture, trying to make it seem like she was truly vulnerable, ready to make things right. The apology felt like a performance, an act to smooth things over. I wasn't buying it. I could see right through her. Every word she spoke was an attempt to get me to soften, to make me forget the betrayal. But I couldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not angry, I said quietly, trying to make my words as measured as possible. But I'm not going to pretend this never happened. Her face twitched. Just for a moment. She wanted me to give in, but I was done. This wasn't about reconciliation. It was about her trying to rewrite history, and I wasn't going to let her. The papers were filed, my lawyer had done his part, and now all that was left was for Jennifer to face the consequences of her actions. I remember the day the divorce papers arrived at her office. The envelope thick with the weight of what was coming slid across her desk. I had watched her once too often at her office, and now I was watching her from a distance. As she opened the letter, 
her face slowly draining of color as she read through it. There was a certain satisfaction in knowing I had prepared everything so precisely. The alienation of affection lawsuit I included against Alan, against anyone who had helped destroy my family, would be a reminder of who truly held the power. The thing about Jennifer was that she always thought she could control the narrative, manipulate situations to her favor, but now she was the one caught in the story she'd tried to rewrite, and I was the one holding the pen. I couldn't help but feel a quiet sense of justice, the kind that comes not from revenge, but from a deep, calm certainty that things were finally going to be set right. Still, as the days passed, there was a flicker of something darker beneath the surface. Pain. It was there, always just below the calm exterior. Because even with all the evidence, even with the legal power I now wielded, a part of me still wished things could have been different. But I buried it. I couldn't afford to let it show. The fight had only just begun. Jennifer's reaction came faster than I expected. She was never one to sit quietly when her world started crumbling, and this time she certainly didn't hold back. As soon as she saw the divorce papers, her face twisted into something almost unrecognizable. Anger mixed with disbelief. What is this, Michael? she demanded, her voice sharp, her hands trembling as she held the papers. Are you really doing this? You gonna take everything away from me like this? I stayed silent for a moment, letting her words hang in the air. The raw defensiveness in her voice was almost laughable, considering what she had done. But there was no humor in it, no satisfaction. Only disappointment and disgust. This was the woman I had shared my life with, the one I thought I knew. And here she was, trying to make me feel guilty for holding her accountable. She threw the papers down onto the kitchen counter, eyes flashing with fury. This is vindictive, Michael, she continued, her tone seething with resentment. You're just trying to destroy everything we built. Destroy everything? I repeated, my voice steady but cold. You destroyed it the moment you decided to lie, to betray me. Don't act like you're the victim here. Her eyes narrowed, and for the first time in what felt like forever, I saw a flicker of fear in her gaze. But she quickly masked it, her pride refusing to let her back down. You're being petty. You're so focused on revenge that you don't see the damage you're causing. I shook my head, my chest tightening. There was nothing left to say to her. She didn't get it. She never would. The consequences of Jennifer's actions didn't come all at once, but when they did, they hit harder than anything I could have imagined. It started with the whispers at work, rumors spreading like wildfire. She was called into HR meetings, her reputation tarnished by the lawsuit and the scandal surrounding her affair. The once confident woman who walked through the door each morning, her head held high, now barely showed her face. I could feel the change from miles away, the subtle shift in the way she carried herself, as though the weight of her choices was finally crashing down on her. It didn't stop there. Alan had taken a leave of absence, but even that wasn't enough to shield Jennifer from the fallout. Her professional life crumbled, one piece at a time. The phone calls and emails she used to get with ease dried up, leaving her isolated and scrambling. She'd sit at home, staring at her phone as though waiting for something, anything, to break the silence. But nothing came. At night, when she thought I couldn't hear her, I'd catch the quiet sobs that would escape her. The sound was hollow, empty, as though she had lost everything she once thought mattered. And, in a way, she had. Friends who once stood by her now kept their distance. Colleagues who had respected her turned their backs. The image she had so carefully built for herself had fallen apart, and she was left with nothing but regret and loneliness. Jennifer had spent years pretending everything was fine, but now she was forced to face the wreckage of her own making. 
The life she had built with lies was unraveling, and no apology could stitch it back together. Jennifer was no longer the woman who had walked into my life with confidence and promises of forever. What I saw now was someone barely holding it together, a shadow of herself, crumbling under the weight of everything she had done. Each day, the isolation became more pronounced. I'd watch her from the corner of my eye as she stared blankly out the window, lost in the world of her own making. The silence in the house more deafening than ever. One night she finally broke. She came to me, her eyes red from crying, and for the first time in months I saw the woman I had loved, the one who used to laugh and dream with me. She stood there, her hands trembling as she spoke, her voice a fragile whisper. Michael, I don't know what to do anymore. I've lost everything. I don't have anyone. I never thought... I never thought it would get this far. Please, I don't want to be alone. Her words cut through me. I didn't respond immediately. Part of me wanted to feel anger, to lash out at her. But another part of me, the part I hated, felt something else. Pity. She was broken, just as I was, but in a different way. Her life was now a wasteland of broken promises and lost connections, and there was no way to repair it. She had lost her way, and no apology, no tearful confession could bring it back. I stood there, silent, letting her words sink in. There was no going back from this. Her regret was real, but it was too late. It had always been too late. I wasn't angry anymore. I was just done. Jennifer's composure finally shattered as she stood in front of me, her shoulders hunched, her entire frame trembling with the weight of what she knew was coming. Her hands, once so steady, now fidgeted nervously in her lap, twisting and turning in a helpless dance of anxiety. She bit her lip, trying to hold back tears, but they came anyway, silent, desperate streams that traced down her cheeks. I could see it in her eyes, the overwhelming realization that she had lost everything that the choices she made had taken her to a place where there was no return. I've ruined everything, Michael, she whispered, barely audible, her voice cracking under the strain of her own guilt. I've lost you. I've lost Lily. I have nothing left. Nothing. She repeated the words, as though she hoped saying them aloud would somehow make the weight of them more bearable. But it didn't. The pain was raw, unbearable, and she knew it. I watched her. Then for the first time I saw her for what she truly was, broken. The confident woman I once knew, the woman who had smiled and promised me the world, was now reduced to this. Her life, once filled with certainty and control, was now slipping through her fingers like sand. She had built her world on lies, and now it was collapsing, leaving nothing but ashes behind. Her sobs were quiet but relentless, each one a sharp reminder of how far she had fallen. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know if there was anything to say. All I could do was watch as she collapsed in on herself, the weight of her mistakes sinking deeper with every breath. Jennifer tried once more to soften the blow, her voice trembling with false sincerity. Michael, please, she pleaded. I never meant for any of this to happen. I was confused and I thought, I thought I could fix it, but now I see how much I've hurt you. Can't we just end this quietly? For Lily's sake, please just let me go with some dignity. Her words hung in the air, desperate, aimed at pooling at whatever remnants of compassion I might still have. But the truth was, there was nothing left of that man she once knew. The love, the trust. Gone. Shattered by her choices. I stood still, calm, while my insides turned with anger and betrayal. I had already made my decision. I reached into my briefcase and slid a folder across the table, 
the weight of it seemed to settle between us, heavier than anything I had ever felt before. Dignity, I repeated, my voice steady, almost cold. You lost that the moment you betrayed me. Jennifer's eyes widened in disbelief, and for the first time I saw a flicker of fear. She had thought she could manipulate this charm her way out of the consequences, but I had come prepared, armed with every piece of evidence I needed. The texts, the emails, the pictures, everything was in that folder. And more than that, I had already filed the legal paperwork. It was too late for her to rewrite the story. Michael, please, she begged again, her voice breaking. I didn't mean to hurt you. I leaned forward, locking eyes with her. You've already done the damage, Jennifer. Now you'll face the consequences. The room felt colder as the silence stretched between us. The world she had built was crumbling, and no amount of pleading could stop it. Jennifer's composure finally shattered. I watched her collapse onto the sofa. Her shoulders slumped, the weight of everything finally bearing down on her. Her breath was shallow, ragged, as if she had been holding everything in for far too long, only to have it spill out in a moment of utter defeat. I can't do this, Michael, she whispered, her voice raw with emotion. I've lost everything. I... I never meant for it to go this far. Her hands trembled as they clutched at her chest, as though trying to hold herself together, but there was nothing left to hold. The betrayal, the lies, the broken trust, they had all built up to this moment, a moment she had long avoided. Now, facing the reality of what she had done, she was coming undone. I didn't move. I couldn't. This wasn't the woman I had known anymore. This was a woman consumed by the wreckage of her choices, trying to pick up the shattered pieces of a life she had destroyed. Her eyes, once confident and assured, now only reflected emptiness, regret without remedy, sorrow without hope. I'm sorry, Michael, she whispered again, but the apology felt hollow. Please, don't do this. Don't make it worse. I could see the raw desperation in her eyes, the quiet plea for redemption, but there was no salvation to offer. Her world had crumbled, and I wasn't the one who had built the walls. It was her. I couldn't save her. Jennifer's life, once filled with promises and certainty, was now nothing more than a crumbling illusion. The moment she signed the divorce papers, it felt like the final nail in the coffin, not just for our marriage, but for her own sense of self. She had spent so much of her life trying to control the narrative trying to maintain an image of perfection, and now it was all falling apart in front of her eyes. I could hear her on the other side of the door, the muffled sobs that came in waves, each one deeper, more desperate than the last. Her life had shattered, and there was no one left to pick up the pieces. She had burned every bridge, and now the flames were consuming her entirely. I felt a twisted sense of relief, knowing that I had done everything I could to protect myself and Lily from the destruction she had caused. But there was no joy in it. Watching Jennifer unravel, losing everything she once held dear, felt like witnessing the slow death of a person I had once loved. I couldn't help but feel sorrow for her, though I knew it was a sorrow she had earned. She had chosen this path, one filled with lies and betrayal, and now she was reaping what she had sown. There was no going back from this, no way to undo the damage. As the days passed, the woman I had once known slipped further into the shadows, a shell of her former self. The wreckage of our life together was complete, and there was nothing left to salvage. Jennifer sat in the living room, her once comfortable space now a silent witness to the collapse of everything she had known. The room that had once echoed with laughter and warmth now felt empty, almost suffocating, as if the very walls were closing in on her. 
She waited, her eyes puffy and red, her hands trembling in her lap as if she were bracing herself for something inevitable. The silence stretched between us, heavy with the weight of everything that had transpired. When I finally spoke, my voice was calm, detached. You're leaving, I said, more to myself than to her. Jennifer's lips parted, her voice breaking as she whispered, I'm sorry, Michael. I didn't mean for any of this to happen. I never wanted to hurt you. She looked at me, her eyes filled with a mix of regret and pleading, but I couldn't bring myself to feel anything but cold resignation. The truth had settled in long ago. She had made her choices, and now we both had to live with the consequences. I exhaled slowly, almost relieved to be done with the tangled mess of emotions we'd both been drowning in for so long. I know, I said quietly, my gaze fixed on her. But it's too late for apologies. Jennifer's face crumbled as she stood up to leave, the finality of it all sinking in. She glanced back at me once, her eyes filled with a quiet sorrow that I couldn't respond to. There was nothing left to say. She had already taken too much. And I had done my share of work under the mischievous spell and denying myself the courage to defend it as I could barely speak, her being stronger and more powerful than I had ever was, and with all that had been done to her in the past few months, plenty of time to remember it. She had already taken too much. As she left, I didn't feel anger. I felt a strange peace, a peace that came from knowing it was finally over. The days that followed Jennifer's departure were strangely calm. For the first time in years, the house felt quiet, the air lighter, as if the weight of an unspoken burden had been lifted. I found myself waking up earlier, not out of obligation, but out of a newfound sense of purpose. The mornings, once filled with tension and dread, now felt like a blank canvas, ready to be filled with something new. I threw myself into work, focusing on the small victories and the progress I could control. I'd forgotten how good it felt to be productive without the constant undercurrent of worry. Each day brought a new sense of accomplishment, no matter how small. I spent time with Lily, our bond growing stronger as we navigated life without the turmoil that had once defined it. We laughed more, talked more, and even found new hobbies to enjoy together. It wasn't perfect, but it was real. I also began to reconnect with old friends, people I had neglected over the years in favor of a relationship that had drained me. Slowly but surely, I rebuilt my life brick by brick. There was a deep sense of satisfaction in the process, knowing that I had taken control of my own happiness again. The road wasn't easy, but each step forward was a reminder of how far I had come, of how much strength I had within me. I didn't need to dwell on the past anymore, I was focused on the future, and for the first time in a long time, I was excited about what was to come. Each time Jennifer came to pick up Lily, it was clear she was becoming more of a shadow of the woman I once knew. She always seemed more tired than the last time, her eyes darker, the once vibrant spark in them now extinguished. Her clothes were a little more disheveled each time, frayed cuffs, loose seams, as if she no longer had the energy to keep up appearances. The woman who had once exuded confidence, elegance, and charm was slipping away, and there was nothing I could do to stop it. I watched her face closely during these visits, noticing the deepening lines and the way she seemed to shrink in on herself. There was no longer the proud posture I remembered. Instead, she hunched, almost as if the weight of her mistakes had physically crushed her. It was painful to witness, not out of sympathy for her choices, but because it was clear she had nowhere to go, no one left to turn to. Each encounter was the same. She would smile weakly at Lily, the gesture falling flat as if it took all her strength just to form it. She would say a few words to me, her voice quiet and strained, almost apologetic but still too proud to ask for help. It was a stark contrast to the woman who once dominated every room. 
I couldn't help but feel a mixture of pity and resignation. The woman who had once hurt me so deeply was now drowning in her own despair, and no amount of sorrow could fix what had been broken. She was falling apart, and there was no redemption for her, not from me, not from anyone. Jennifer sat across from me, her hands trembling slightly as she fidgeted with the fabric of her jacket. Her gaze dropped to the floor, and for a long moment neither of us spoke. The silence between us was thick, almost suffocating, filled with the weight of everything unsaid. She looked older, worn down, as if the years of pretending were finally catching up to her. The woman who once commanded attention now seemed so small, so diminished by the reality of her choices. I was wrong, Michael, she finally whispered, her voice barely audible. I know I can't take any of it back, but I need you to know that I'm sorry. I ruined everything. I ruined us. Her words, though quiet, rang out in the empty space, and for a brief moment I saw something raw in her eyes, an unfamiliar vulnerability. The regret in her voice was palpable, suffocating even, as if she could feel the full weight of her mistakes in every breath she took. She took a shaky breath and looked at me, her face drawn with pain. I never thought it would end like this. I never thought I would lose everything. The tremor in her voice betrayed the depth of her sorrow. There was no anger in her any more. Only the crushing burden of realizing that the life she once had was gone. The words, though they were laced with regret, felt hollow. I could see the desperation in her eyes, but nothing could fix the destruction she had caused. I didn't say anything right away. There was nothing left to say. The damage was done and the woman who once held my heart was now a stranger, begging for forgiveness that I couldn't give. The days without Jennifer felt strangely quiet, almost peaceful. At first, there was a heaviness in the air, the kind of silence that seemed to stretch on forever. But slowly, that silence began to change. It became a comfort, a space where I could finally breathe again without the constant weight of her betrayal hanging over me. I found myself waking up earlier, feeling a sense of clarity I hadn't experienced in years, there were no more lies to uncover, no more games to play, no more constant wondering whether I was being deceived. The absence of her presence in my life was a relief, even though it had come at such a high cost. But as time passed, I started to realize something. I had been suffocating in the chaos of our relationship, and now I was free. Lily and I began to build our own routine one that was free from the tension and sadness that had defined our days together. We spent weekends doing things we loved, without the nagging feeling of pretending for the sake of keeping up appearances. There was an ease to our life now, a peace that felt earned, though bittersweet. I no longer found myself looking over my shoulder, wondering what Jennifer was doing, or if she would somehow return to disrupt the fragile peace I had built. Life without her was exactly what I needed, and for the first time in a long while, I felt like I was moving forward, not just surviving, but living again. The call from Emily came unexpectedly, shattering the stillness of my day. Uh, her voice was strained, thick with, with emotion. Michael, it's Jennifer. She's really sick, and she wants to see you, and I don't think she has much time left. I didn't know what to feel. A part of me recoiled at the thought of seeing her again after everything that had happened. The bitterness, the anger, it was all still there, buried deep. But there was also something else, something I couldn't ignore. A small flicker of compassion, maybe even pity, for the woman she had become. When I arrived at her apartment, the contrast was jarring. The woman who had once stood so tall, so sure of herself, now seemed small and frail. Her clothes hung loosely on her, as if she had lost weight too quickly, and her face, once so full of life, now appeared gaunt, lined with exhaustion. 
She was no longer the person I had once loved, but someone entirely different, a mere shadow of that woman. She looked up when I entered, her eyes filled with a mixture of guilt and regret. I didn't want it to end like this, she whispered, her voice barely audible. I never thought I'd be here, like this, alone. Her words hit me harder than I expected. The woman who had destroyed so much now sat before me, vulnerable and broken. As I sat down beside her, the flood of memories hit me. The good times we shared, the love that had once felt so real, it all seemed so far away now. But as I looked at her, I didn't feel anger. I felt something else. Resignation. This was the end of her story. And for the first time, I realized that I could finally move on. I had forgiven her, not for her sake, but for mine. There was peace in that, in knowing I no longer had to carry the weight of the past. This was the final chapter, and it was time to close the book. When I walked into the small cafe, Jennifer was sitting by the window, her posture slumped, looking almost like a shadow of her former self. Time had not been kind to her. Her once radiant face now held a weariness I hadn't expected. Her eyes, dull and tired, flickered with recognition as I approached. But there was a hesitation there, a nervousness that hadn't been present before. I took the seat across from her, feeling an awkward silence settle between us. The years of separation, the anger, the betrayal, all of it hung in the air, thick and suffocating. She wasn't the confident woman I had once loved, but a broken version, unsure of herself, trapped in the aftermath of her own choices. Michael, she began, her voice soft, almost tentative. I never imagined we'd be here, talking like this, after everything. She paused, her gaze lowering. I know I can never fix what I did, but I need you to know that I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for everything. Her words felt heavy, but not in the way I thought they would. I didn't feel rage or resentment. What I felt instead was a deep sense of quiet sorrow. I, I had forgiven her long ago, not for her, but for me. I know, I said, my voice steady, calm. I I've moved on, Jennifer, you should too. She nodded, her eyes brimming with tears, a final surrender to the reality she had created for herself. In that moment, I realized something. I wasn't angry anymore. I was free. Jennifer's voice broke through the silence, raw and fragile. Michael, she whispered, her hands trembling as she looked at me. I've spent so much time regretting everything. I wish I could go back, make different choices. I didn't realize what I had until it was gone. Her words felt almost like a plea, but they carried an emptiness, like a person trying to fix a shattered mirror with words, knowing full well it couldn't be done. She swallowed hard, wiping her eyes with the back of her hand. I'm not asking for your forgiveness, I don't deserve it, but I need you to know that I'm truly sorry for the pain I caused, for everything. I sat there, staring at her feeling a strange weight settle in my chest. The pain that once consumed me seemed distant now, replaced by something quieter, something more complex. There was no anger, no resentment, just a quiet understanding of what had happened and a realization that she wasn't the same woman who had walked away from me all those years ago. I sighed, leaning back in my chair, you can't change the past, Jennifer, but you don't have to carry it with you anymore. I've let it go. Her lips trembled and she nodded slowly as if she had already known that answer, but hearing it aloud made it final. I just wanted you to know, she said, her voice barely audible, that I'm sorry, I, I truly am. 
In that moment, I realized I wasn't holding on to the past anymore. I had moved on, and her apology, though heartfelt, was just a part of the closure I'd already found. The news of Jennifer's passing came unexpectedly, a phone call from Emily that shook the ground beneath me. She was gone. The woman who had once been my wife, the mother of my child, was no longer in this world. The weight of her absence hit me in waves, but it wasn't the kind of grief I had expected. There was no anger, no bitterness, just a quiet stillness, like the last breath of a long-forgotten storm finally passing. I found myself thinking back to the time when I first met Jennifer, the hope, the dreams, the life we thought we would build. Those memories weren't as sharp now. The pain she caused, the lies, the betrayal, those things had faded too. What remained was a strange sense of peace. I had uh, let go of the anger, the hurt, the resentment. They no longer had the power to control me. As I stood by her gravesite, something in me shifted. I wasn't holding on to the past anymore. I wasn't angry at her. I wasn't even sad in the way I thought I would be. What I felt was acceptance. The years of torment, of confusion and loss, had all led to this moment. One of finality, yes, but also one of closure. <laughs> it was over, and with that final chapter closed, I could breathe again. I could move on. For the first time in so long, I felt free. Free from the pain, free from the past. And as I stood there, I realized that Jennifer's death had not just marked the end of her story, but the beginning of mine. The sun was just beginning to set as I watched Lily walk down the aisle, her smile radiating pure joy. It had been years since I had felt such a lightness in my heart. The weight of the past, the betrayal, the anger, the endless questioning, had finally lifted, replaced by something more hopeful, more genuine. It was as if the life I had once known had been washed away and what remained was a future full of possibility. As I sat there, watching her marry the man she loved, I realized just how far I had come. The man I was a few years ago, the one drowning in bitterness and regret, felt like a distant memory, a version of myself that no longer had any hold over me. The peace I had fought for, the stability I had craved, was finally here. It wasn't just the absence of pain. It was the presence of something much better, freedom, joy, and the quiet confidence that I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Looking around at the faces of the people who mattered most, my daughter, the friends who had stuck by me, the new relationships I had nurtured, I felt a profound sense of gratitude. Everything had led to this moment, and for the first time in years, I could truly say, that I was looking forward to the future. The days that followed felt lighter, as though the weight I had carried for so long had finally lifted. I found myself looking forward to things I hadn't thought about in years, weekends with Lily, simple dinners with friends, and moments of peace that I'd never truly appreciated until now. The past, with all its pain and bitterness, seemed more distant with each passing day. I no longer had the urge to look back or to carry the wounds that had once defined me. They were part of my story, but they no longer had a place in my life. I took a deep breath as I stood in front of the mirror, noticing how much more relaxed I looked, how much more at ease I felt. The man I had been, weighed down by the past, was gone. In his place stood someone who had learned the value of forgiveness, of letting go, and of embracing the future that was his to shape. The scars were still there, but they were no longer sharp. They had softened into something manageable, even healing. Looking out the window, I realized just how much had changed. It wasn't just the absence of pain. It was the presence of hope. Life was moving forward, and I was moving with it. I was free to embrace the future, not with fear, but with quiet anticipation. For the first time in years, I felt ready to embrace whatever came next, because I knew that, whatever it was, I was no longer defined by the mistakes of the past. 
The phone rang late one evening, and when I picked it up, I immediately recognized Emily's voice, though it was softer than usual, laced with hesitation. Michael, it's about Jennifer, she started, her words slow, as if she were trying to find the right way to say something unbearable. She's... she's very sick. I don't know how much time she has left, but she wants to see you. She needs to talk to you one last time. I felt a strange heaviness settle in my chest as the words sank in. I wasn't prepared for this, hadn't expected it at all. The image of Jennifer, vibrant and full of life, seemed so far removed from the woman Emily was describing. I paused, trying to steady myself before I spoke. I don't know if I'm the right person for this, uh, Emily. There was a long pause on the other end of the line. I could almost hear Emily's quiet struggle as she fought to find the words. She doesn't have anyone else. Please, Michael, for closure, for both of you. Her plea was gentle, but it carried weight. My thoughts drifted back to the years we spent together, the memories of a life once shared, now tainted by so much loss. There was a part of me that felt compelled to go, to offer whatever peace I could, even after everything. But there was also a reluctance, a part of me that wanted to keep the past buried, untouched. I'll come, I said finally, my voice tight. I didn't know what I'd find or what I could offer, but I knew it was the right thing to do, for her, for me. As I stood by her bedside, the room felt heavy, filled with a silence that was almost suffocating. Jennifer, once so full of life and energy, now appeared fragile, her skin pale and drawn, her body too weak to hold the strength it once had. The years had not been kind to her. What was left was a shell of the woman I had known. But, even in her weakness, there was a quiet dignity in her eyes. The eyes that once held so many emotions, now carried only regret. She reached out, her hand trembling slightly and I took it, feeling the coldness of her skin. Her voice was barely a whisper as she spoke, each word weighed down with a lifetime of unspoken pain. I'm sorry, Michael she said, her eyes brimming with tears. I've made so many mistakes. I never meant for things to end this way. I never wanted to hurt you. I stood there, feeling the weight of the moment settle over me. Her words were soft, but they held an honesty that I had never seen in her before. There was no need to say anything in return. The anger, the hurt, the bitterness, all of it had faded. I had forgiven her long ago, but now, with her so vulnerable, I finally understood the depth of her sorrow. You don't need to apologize any more, I said quietly, my voice steady but calm. You've done enough. Now it's time for you to find peace. Her tears fell, but there was a sense of relief in her face, a silent acknowledgement that the burden she had carried for so long was finally being put to rest and as I turned to leave, I realized that I, too, was free. Free from the past, free from the weight of old wounds. As I walked away from the hospital, a light rain began to fall, the soft patter of the droplets on the pavement adding to the quiet stillness of the moment. The air was cool, refreshing, almost cleansing. I could feel the coldness of the rain on my face, but it wasn't uncomfortable. Rather, it felt like a symbol of something much deeper, a kind of release. With each step, I felt a little lighter, a little freer from the years of anger and resentment that had weighed me down. The past, with all its pain, betrayal, and heartbreak, seemed to fade into the distance, becoming a part of me that no longer held any power over my life. It was a chapter that had ended, and though it was a painful one, I could now see it for what it was, a lesson, a part of my journey. When I stood there, watching the rain gently wash away the remnants of the day, I realized just how far I had come.
I had let go of the past, let go of the pain, and in its place there was something better. Peace, clarity, and the promise of a brighter future. I had done what I needed to do, and now, with Lily by my side, I could move forward. I didn't know what the future would bring, but for the first time in years I was ready for it. There was no more fear, no more holding on to what was lost, only the quiet, comforting knowledge that I was finally free. Thank you all for listening to today's story. Michael's journey is not just about betrayal and pain, but also about rediscovering himself, overcoming the hurt, and moving toward a hopeful future. Life always challenges us, but from the wreckage, we learn to rise stronger and wiser. This story serves as a reminder that even in the face of difficulties, we can always find the light at the end of the tunnel. Once again, thank you for spending your time and emotions with us. See me in the next story where deep emotions and life lessons will continue to be shared. Wishing you all a wonderful day.